right, so I'll go ahead and get started. Thanks everybody for joining today. Um, today we're gonna go over workplace eye wellness. My name is Samantha Butler and I'm a community health manager with Prevent Blindness Wisconsin. But I'll just go ahead and get started with a brief background on our organization in case you're not familiar. Um, PBW was founded in 1958 and a big bulk of the work that we do is centered around vision training and health education as well. Um, our goal is to preserve sight, both for children and adults, so we do have a lot of programming across the lifespan, and our vision is for each Wisconsin resident to have healthy vision at every stage of life. And so a little bit more about what we do, we do partner with a lot of different individuals and organizations throughout the state. So we do partner with the health departments, shelters, the Department of Public Instruction, school nurses, um, head Starts, child care centers, private schools, free and reduced clinics, and then also the Wisconsin Lions Foundation as well. And then we in turn support those partners as they vision screen throughout the state. And then just to show you a little bit of our impact That's from quiet. last year, we did reach over 349,000 Wisconsinites with our programming. We served over 138,000 with our direct preventative vision health services. Yeah. And then we conducted about 50 statewide virtual trainings. And then we did train over 1,400 individuals as certified vision screeners as well. And then just kind of showing you what that looks like a little bit more visually. So kind of our impact throughout the state by county. So, like I said, we reached over 349,000 individuals, and that's through things like trainings, vision screenings throughout the state, public health education, and then also our monthly newsletter as well. So, just some objectives that we'll touch on today. We'll talk about some common eye injuries that we see in the workplace. We'll also go over the different types of eye protection that we can use. We'll talk a little bit about digital eye strain, and then we'll also go over some tips that we can utilize to protect our eyes while working in the workplace as well. So how common are eye injuries in the workplace? Every day about 2,000 workers do suffer from some type of job-related eye injury that requires medical treatment. Um, typically, workplace eye injuries will cost an estimated $300 million or more per year in workers' compensation, medical treatment, and lost productivity as well. Men between the ages of 25 and 44 do make up a large majority of those workplace eye injuries at about 80%. And then 61% of eye injuries are going to occur in manufacturing and construction business, as well as trade jobs too. So then some workplaces that we, you know, see the highest risk for eye injury are things like construction, manufacturing, mining, carpentry, auto repair, electrical work, plumbing, welding, and then also other maintenance jobs as well. And then just kind of showing you the most common sources of eye injury too in any given year. So on the left-hand side here, we just have products. So we have some power tools, welding, workshop grinders, buffers, polishers, manual tools, bleach, lawnmowers, adhesives, tools, eye protective devices, and then also just general household cleaners as well. And then on the right hand side, you'll see the estimated number of people injured. So these are kind of some of the top ones that we see. So you can kind of see what that looks like a little bit. And then just a little bit more on what we commonly see for eye injuries in the workplace too, things like chemical or foreign objects in the eye, scratches on the cornea, so right along the front portion of our eye on that outside portion, we might see some scratches there, fluid splashed in the eye, burns from steam, and then also UV or infrared radiation exposure too. So then a little bit about the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA. This was established in 1971, and they do strive to safeguard worker health and safety in the U.S. 
Um, they have decreased the work fatality rate by about 50% since their inception as well. So then getting into some eye protection. So it's very important that we know the eye safety dangers that we have at work. And then also that we try to eliminate those hazards by using things like machine guards, work screens, and other controls. It's also important that we use the proper eye protection for our role at work. And then also just keeping that safety eyewear in good condition. So if it's broken or damaged, we just wanna make sure we're getting that fixed or that we are replacing that as well. So with protective eyewear, I'll go over a few different kinds that we might see. The first we have here is non-prescription or prescription safety glasses. So with those, we wanna make sure those meet the standards of the American National Standards Institute. One thing we can look for to make sure they're meeting those standards is that they have a Z87 mark on the lens or the frame. So you'll see in the picture below here, we can kind of see that right on the inside of the frame there. So that's something we can look at. We just wanna make sure it's stamped with that. And then another thing to look for is polycarbonate lenses. Those are going to provide the highest level of protection for our eyes, especially in terms of impact um, to the eye. Another option we have too is goggles. So these are going to provide protection from uh, chemicals if you work with those, especially if those are splashing around a lot. You'll notice in the picture on the slide, it's going to shield our entire eye, which is nice. And those can also be worn over prescription glasses or be worn with contacts as well. Another option we have too is face shields and helmets. Those are going to protect those individuals who are exposed to chemicals, heat, and even bloodborne pathogens as well. They will, um, a helmet will also protect individuals who are exposed to molten materials. And these both should be used with safety glasses or goggles as well. Other types of protection too, some helmets and goggles can be made with special filters that can be used to protect the eyes from things like radiation, especially if we have individuals who are welding or maybe working with lasers as well. So then getting into some first aid that we can use for eye emergencies. So we'll talk through a couple different things here. The first we have is chemical burns. Um, so if that is something that happens, we'll wanna immediately flush the eye with water. If you do wear contact lenses, we wanna make sure we keep those in. And then one important thing is making sure we're keeping that eye open as we're flushing with water. And we will continue doing that for about 15 minutes if possible. One thing to note with chemical burns, we don't want to bandage the eye and you'll want to seek emergency medical care very promptly. Something else that may come up too, a speck in the eye. With this, we want to make sure we don't rub the eye. You might feel the need to do that, but we try not to do that. And then we'll want to let tears wash out that speck. If tears aren't quite doing it for us, we can use a commercial eye wash as well. We'll want to try lifting up our upper eyelid outward and then also try to look down over our lower lid if possible. One thing we don't want to do is use tweezers or other items to try to get the speck out of our eye. If it doesn't wash out, we'll just want to see an eye doctor immediately. Next, we have blows to the eye. So with this, we'll want to apply a cold compress but try not to add any added pressure to that. And then we'll just wanna make sure that we seek emergency medical care. If you're having things like pain, maybe some blurry vision, maybe you notice one eye is sticking out a little bit more than the other. If you notice some blood in the eye or even if there's a black eye present as well. Another thing we have here too is cuts and punctures to the eye or even the eyelid. We don't want to wash out the eye with water or any other type of liquid if that does occur. We also try not to remove the object that's stuck in the eye. With this, we'll want to cover the eye with a rigid eye shield, or you can also use the bottom half of a paper cup, but just try not to apply any added pressure with that. And then we'll just want to make sure that we seek emergency medical care right away too. 
Um, and then the last one we have is just being prepared. So we want to make sure we're wearing eye protection, especially for hazardous activities, whether that's at school, home, on the job, things like that. And then also important, just making sure we have a first aid kit stocked with a rigid eye shield and commercial eye wash. You'll see examples of those below. So when we talk about a rigid eye shield, that's going to look like this on the right hand side. And then on the left, you'll notice this is a station that has that commercial eye wash available. Another thing with this too, we just don't want to assume that an eye injury is harmless. So if you're not sure about it, um, it's definitely safe to see an eye doctor um, to make sure that everything's looking okay. So then moving on to some tips that we can use to prevent some of those occupational eye injuries. So I have a series of 10 things here. So the first one is assess. So with this, just looking carefully at operations at your workplace, you know, maybe inspecting the area, routes and equipment you'll be using too. And then also just identifying some areas that might present some hazards. Next, we have test. So with this, uncorrected vision problems can cause accidents. So we just wanna make sure that we're undergoing vision testing, um, whether that's before you start the job or also with just our routine physical examinations as well. Next, I have protect. So with this, we just wanna make sure that we have protective eyewear that's designed for our occupation. And then like I mentioned earlier too, we just wanna make sure it's meeting those standards set by the OSHA Act of 1970. So again, just kind of looking for that Z87 marker. Again, that could be you know on the lens or maybe on the inside of the frames like is pictured there on the slide too. Next we have participate. So with this, um, it's important that um, we establish a mandatory program at work that goes over protection um, and requires that eye protection at your facility too. The next one we have is fit. So we just wanna make sure that our protective eyewear is fitting us correctly. It's important that we have that fitted by an eye care professional or another trained individual as well. And then we also just wanna make sure that workers understand that they are responsible for their protective eyewear. Like I mentioned before, if that gets damaged or broken, we just wanna make sure we're replacing that or getting that fixed as well. Next, we have plan for an emergency. So it's really important that we establish first aid procedures for those eye injuries. Um, it's important that we have um, an accessible eye wash station, especially if you are working with chemicals. So we wanna make sure that is accessible for workers to use if an eye emergency does come up. And then we also just wanna make sure that workers are trained in basic first aid and know how to administer that if something does come up as well. Next, we have educate. So with this, it's just important that we have ongoing educational programs and make sure we're reinforcing the need for protective eyewear. It's also very helpful if we add safety to regular employee trainings and then also orientation for new workers as well. Next one we have is support. So management support is key to having a successful eye safety program. And then we have review. So frequently reviewing and even revising prevention policies if that is needed. And then just to note, we want to strive to have no eye injuries or accidents in the workplace. And then lastly, we have put it in writing. So with this, once you have your safety program put together and finalized, you want to make sure we have that in writing and then also make sure that we're displaying that policy um, somewhere where workers can see it and it's easily accessible. So moving from that, um, we'll jump into digital eye strain. So we'll go over a little bit on this. So um, more so if you know we're in an office setting, working on a computer a lot, when we use screens for a long period of time, we might start to notice some discomfort or vision problems too. The average time spent on screens for workers, especially in the US, is about seven hours per day. Aside from those work-related activities though, the average person does spend about six and a half hours looking at a screen each day. 
So a little bit of a breakdown on that too. About two and a half of those hours are spent scrolling through social media, about another hour and a half streaming music, and then a little over an hour of listening to podcasts too. So you'll notice a large portion of this time is spent on mobile devices. Some common symptoms we might notice with this, eye strain, might notice some headaches or fatigue, some blurred vision. You might notice your eyes are a bit more dry than usual, and you might notice some neck and shoulder pain as well. So a little bit more on how this is going to affect our eyes. When we use screens for a long period of time, we are going to strain our eyes because we're continuously focusing and refocusing, especially when we're using our near eye muscles up close. When we use screens, we also tend to blink a lot less as well, and that can cause the eyes to dry out a little bit too. And then just focusing on that screen close up can cause additional strain to the eyes too. Some things we can do to reduce that, we do like to recommend the 20-20-20 rule. So with that, we recommend after 20 minutes of spending time on a screen, looking at something 20 feet away for 20 seconds. Taking a break such as that just allows us to use our distance eye muscles a little bit more and give those near eye muscles a break. Some other things we can do too, we can place the screen about 20 to 28 inches from our eyes and then slightly below eye level if possible. That will be the most comfortable for us. And then another thing you can do is avoiding glare on your screens. Some laptops and computers, you know, have some settings where we can kind of lower the brightness to kind of help reduce some of that glare too. Another thing is just reminding yourself to blink frequently. Like I mentioned, when we're spending a lot of time on screens, we tend to blink quite a bit less. And then also just taking breaks. So if you're able to, you know, get up and take, you know, a minute or two break um, during the day, that's helpful as well. So we often get asked about blue light glasses as well. So just kind of going over what those are actually doing. So blue light glasses are going to reduce the amount of blue light that reaches our eyes from screens that we are using. Typically the blue light glasses have a special coating or tint on them that's designed to block blue light that's emitted from those screens. And then it is also thought that wearing those blue light glasses will help reduce some of that eye strain uh, fatigue that we often experience. Do those actually work? There is not a lot of evidence that shows, you know, a significant improvement in vision or even quality of sleep um, by wearing those blue light glasses. So some things we can try to, aside from that, again, trying that 20-20-20 rule. So, you know, every 20 minutes of spending time on screens, taking a break, looking at something 20 feet away for about 20 seconds. We can also use artificial tears eye drops to help kind of keep those eyes hydrated, especially if your eyes are feeling really dry. And then we also just recommend getting a dilated eye exam too, if you are noticing some changes in your vision or if you have any other concerns with that too. We also really like to promote spending time outdoors. That can be helpful as well that will help reduce eye fatigue that we experience, um, especially if we're spending a lot of time on screens. And again, we can also practice that 20-20-20 rule outside. It's a little bit easier to do outside because we can kind of see a further distance and kind of practice using those distance eye muscles and not so much of those near eye muscles. Spending time outdoors will also help reduce the risk of myopia. So with myopia, that is nearsightedness. So with that, we'll notice things up close will be pretty clear for us, but things further away tend to be a bit more blurry for us. So spending time outdoors can really help prevent elongation of the eye that we notice with myopia. So that is another benefit we have there. And then lastly, also just making sure we're practicing eye safety when we're spending time outdoors. So making sure we're wearing sunglasses that are absorbing, um, you know, close to 100%, if not all of those UV rays that we are exposed to outside. And then also wearing a brimmed cap can actually um, 
cut out about 50% of those UV rays that are reaching our eyes too. So that's kind of another helpful tip with that too. And then just the last thing I was gonna go over too was just dilated eye exams, kind of showing you what that looks like a little bit. So you'll notice on the left hand side here, we have an undilated pupil. So with that, you'll see there's a pretty small portion of the back of the eye that can be seen as opposed to a dilated pupil on the right hand side over here. You'll notice they can see a much larger portion of the back of the eye, including the optic nerve back here. That's our main communication system between our eyes and the brain, kind of telling us what image we're seeing on a daily basis. So it's important that the eye doctor can get a good look at that and just get a you know more full picture of the back of the eye for us. So then just some recommendations for dilated eye exams. We recommend adults 18 to 59 years of age with no risk factors should plan to get a dilated eye exam about every two to four years. Adults who are at risk for a vision concern um, or who have been diagnosed with one Things such as glaucoma, diabetes-related retinopathy, age-related macular degeneration, we recommend they get an eye exam every year or as otherwise recommended by their eye doctor. And then adults 60 years and older should get a dilated eye exam once per year as well. Typically, as we age, our eyes tend to change a little bit more frequently, so we just want to make sure we're staying on top of that and making sure everything looks healthy too. All right, that's all the content we had for today. If anybody had any questions, you can feel free to ask those. Um, but otherwise, that's all we had for today. All right, if there aren't any other questions, I can let you go. Um, thanks for joining today. I hope you all have a good rest of your day.